Welcome to part 26, if I'm not mistaken, of building the Rick and Morty app series. Uh, we are basically going to pick up exactly where we left off, specifically focusing on episode details before getting into it. Smash that like button down below. It helps out a lot. Drop a comment and say hello if you're new here. Um, hopefully you've subscribed already, but if not, hit subscribe and let's continue. So our episode details screen particularly is when we click into a episode, be it from the episode tab or be it from the episodes down here in uh, character info or character detail, I should say. We want to show some details, obviously, about a episode. So to do that, let's refresh our memory and take a look at what a single episode uh, model will actually give us from the API. So it'll give us information about that episode, the name, the air date, uh, the episode number, but the most interesting thing that it will give us is the uh, characters list here. So which characters appeared in that episode? Once again, you'll notice you don't actually get for each of these entries, you know, details about a character. You get the endpoint to character info, and we are going to once again build this in a way such that we can actually get all the details about a single character. I am going to introduce a new concept of dispatch groups that I've mentioned before, but we went a different route for getting episode data, and let's uh, let's get to it. So, when we actually cl click on the episode screen, what we're going into is the RM episode detail view controller, and respectively, we do have a view model here. And what I want to do is, as soon as this is created we fetch episode data, right? So once we've fetched episode data, we're just printing it out at the moment. So instead of printing it out at the moment, we want to do another thing. And that thing that we want to do is we want to hang on to that episode data. And we also want to fetch information about all the characters that appeared in that episode. So let's actually build this out. So I'm going to start by adding some comments. And let's go ahead and say fetch backing episode model. And let's create another function here. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to say private func fetch. Um, let's see, fetch related characters is maybe what I'll call it. And this takes in a episode. It'll be a RM episode like so. And we want to build out something on this. So we're going to actually call this from here by saying self fetch related characters passing in the model, which is our success here. And once again, we don't want to leak any memory, so we are going to capture self in a weak capacity. And inside of here, what I'm going to do is we're going to get the endpoints for the character. So we're going to say the uh, character URLs will be episode.characters, and we're going to go ahead and compact map these to URL objects. So in here, we can say return a URL where the string is $0, and this is going to give us a collection of URL objects, if I'm not mistaken. So we have a warning that we haven't used it, but that's fine and expected. So now that we have these character URLs, we want to actually convert these to requests. So we might have n number of characters, right? So we want to basically kick off a request for each of these characters. So prior, what we had done in the character uh, screen, so if we go to the character uh, uh, or detail screen, what we had done here is we were only getting the info once the user actually scrolled the relevant cell onto screen. So you can debate that this is more efficient, but in some cases, um, you might want to batch get all the data up front. So that's what we're going to do um, primarily so you guys are aware that that's a way to, you know, to set this up as well. So now that we've got URLs, we're going to attempt to create requests. And this is going to be a collection of RM requests. And all I'm going to do is I am going to say for these character URLs, compact map, which we're basically just looping, and we're going to say try to create a RM request, RM request with the given URL. Now we do know this is nullable, so if it does result in you know nil being returned, we are just going to basically ignore it, and it won't be added to this. Now you can shorthand this even more if you'd like. What you can do is 
you can actually put this here and we'll see if the compiler lets me do this we can actually compact map this once more so what this is doing in kind of fancy speak this is now requests it'll first create a collection of urls from the strings and then it's going to loop over those and attempt to create a collection of requests from those urls and now that we have this we're going to leverage a dispatch group so a dispatch group in concept what it lets you do is it lets you kick off let's say like 10 or actually any number of parallel parallel requests and then we get notified once all are done so it's not like we do api call one and then wait for it then do number two and then do number three what we do is we send out all those requests at the same time and we don't really know the order they're going to come back to us right so what we do is we basically say hey dispatch group notify us when all the stuff all the requests in your group have completed so let's actually set that up so i'll leave these comments here as a maybe an explainer for later on but here we're going to say that we have a group and this is going to be dispatch group and we can basically just go ahead and instantiate this takes in no arguments and we are going to loop over our request so say for request in requests what we want to go ahead and do is say group that enter meaning something has started and we are going to say rm service shared we're going to execute the given request the single request that we are uh, looping over we expect to get a character back and we have our completion handler here once again this should be uh this should kind of be known at this point we're going to loop over the result and let me actually see if that can give us better autocompletes and in this case we have our model in the actual uh failure case what we'll go ahead and do is ignore this and we'll just continue to the next iteration of our for loop here this will be our model now we expect to get a collection of characters back so i'm going to go ahead and say characters is a collection of rm characters starting off as empty and in here i can go ahead and say characters just go ahead and append the model that you got back the order of this is not really relevant so let's see what else do we want this is yelling at me because i guess we can't continue in there so we'll just break out of the switch and the other thing we're going to go ahead and do here is we're in a defer block we're going to say group dot leave and defer just means that this is the last thing that's going to run before the execution of our program exits the scope of this callback of this closure so first all of this jazz will run and the very last thing it's going to run it's going to tell our group that hey whatever thing we kicked off and started we left that so the way this works under the hood is this will increment our operation by one every time. So let's say we looped over this 20 times. This will end up being 20, and then this is going to decrement it. So once we get to minus 20, where group is now at zero, it'll know that, hey, we have nothing left to do. And once we have nothing left to do, we just want to be notified that, hey, everything is done. And we want to be notified on the main queue. And we can specify a closure here, a callback, if you will, of what should I do once I'm done. And what we're going to do is pretty simple, actually. We are going to create a global uh, variable here, and this is going to be called, and let me actually call it a, let's call it a data tuple or tuple, and this is going to be of type parens, and the first thing that's going to be in here is an RM episode, and this is going to be a collection of RM characters, and by default, it's going to be optional. So these are the two pieces of elements that we are going to want in the global space. It'll be private because we'll expose it with a better you know, public API, but this is essentially what we want here. And what I'm going to do in here is on the main queue, I'm going to say self.datatuple will be a tuple, parentheses, and here we're going to pass in the episode, which we're getting from the parameter that we passed in. And we also now have the collection of characters. And similar to what we did in other parts of our application, we're going to then notify our view that it needs an update with a did set. And that's how we will notify it. Now, to actually do the notification, one thing I, I am going to do here is we're going to introduce a delegate. And we are going to say that the detail view view model delegates any object and we are going to create a single function in here and we're going to say did uh, fetch 
episode details. And what we can actually do is we can hang on to this as a weak delegate uh, variable. And then here I'll just say delegate did fetch this. And this will notify our delegate, which will be the view in this case, that hey, you can now start reading data off of this view model. So let me actually move some of this stuff around. Both of these things are private. Our uh, delegate here is public. We have this here as well. Let me put this here as private. And then we're also going to have a bunch of public things. So let's see how we actually want to go ahead and do this. So we're going to jump back into the uh, controller for the, not core, for the RM episode detail view. We are passing in the view model and we're also going ahead and passing in uh, or creating rather, I should say a detail view. So what I'll go ahead and do here is we, we want to assign the delegate onto uh, the view being our view model before we start fetching, right? Because there is an edge case here of what happens if the fetch is super duper fast and the data comes back before this delegate property is assigned. So what I'll actually do is I'm going to delete the call to that here and we're going to make this public. And what we can do by virtue of doing that is we can not only set this up so we can say our detail views delegate, rather our view model delegate, I should say, is going to be our detail view. And optionally, what you could actually do here is, and this is yelling because we aren't conforming in there, what you could also actually do is you could make self the delegate here. So let me actually do that since it's a different model versus what we've done previously. And here I can say this is RM episode. If I just do delegate, we should find it. There is a RM episode detail view rm episode let's see if i type this correct detail view view model delegate and the only uh, function in here that we have is uh, did fetch episode data and now we can say detail view go ahead and we can configure with the view model that we have right and now we haven't added any of this jazz onto our actual uh, view yet so bear with me we're going to jump into that episode detail view and we basically don't have like anything in here yet so let's create some functions so we're going to say add constraints we are going to want to set up some views in here we are also going to say public func configure with a view model and this is going to be a rm uh, episode detail view view model this one right here and yeah let's see what else we want to do we probably want to hang on to this in the global scope of this view so we can reference it in places so we'll go ahead and do that and here I'll say self dot view model is view model and once again keep in mind the way that this pattern works is we need to say on our view model that we should start fetching information. So once we come here, uh, we do want to say, let's see, did I do it or did I forget to do it? I'm going to say view models delegate is going to be self. Let's go ahead and build. Shouldn't yell at me since we are conforming to it down here. I'll just add a comment for myself so I can remember that I am implementing delegate functions. And once we actually go ahead and do that, let me actually move it down here. I can say view model, go ahead and fetch episode data. Once I fetch the episode data and this is called, we're going to pass the view model to our view, right? While it's doing that, our view should be showing like a spinner or something to that nature. So yeah, let's jump to our view. And I guess what's left to do is figure out what our view is going to actually look like. And we'll probably do that in another video, but let's at least briefly clean some of the stuff in here. So let's add some comments. We're gonna want to add some constraints. And the other thing that I'm gonna want to go ahead and do here is we want to show, let's see, where's my view? We wanna show the information that is shown here. So we want probably a name cell, an air cell episode, and then we somehow wanna show these characters as well. So one good way to model this, once again, is a collection view. 
So instead of copy and pasting, because I realized when I did that before, it got a little messy, we're gonna actually build it out by hand again. So the only view that I care to have in here is a collection view, and we are once again going to use a compositional layout. So let me at least create a optional property here and let's go ahead and call this collection view of type ui collection view optional we are going to go ahead and say self dot collection view is create collection view which obviously we haven't created yet i'm gonna mark this as public to visually separate all this jazz this is going to create and return our collection view to us. We're not gonna do it yet. We are gonna to want to add some constraints to it. So we'll go ahead and call that here. And here we're gonna say NS layout constraints. We're gonna activate some constraints. And then of course, we are also going to want to show a spinner in here. So we're gonna say private let spinner is a UI activity indicator view. And we'll create and return it here. And I'm gonna do my best to cut the video off after this before I get excited and continue onwards. We are gonna say translates auto resizing masks into constraints is false. So cool, in the next video, we are gonna fix this build error. It's yelling at me because we're not returning a collection view. We're gonna build out this view and we'll see how far we get. There's no pagination. There's no you know additional data loading for episode details. So we'll hopefully be able to build out the view at least and then maybe we'll progress to the view model. So make sure you hit that like button before continuing, comment, say hello. Let me know if you're excited to continue. Let me know if you're a subscriber. Stay tuned, I'll see you in the next part.